Hi, I'm Jackson Crawford, and I am back again today at Stoltenen Audna Magnusonar i Islandskum Freiden, the the Audna Magnuson Institute for Icelandic Studies in Reykjavik, Iceland, with Dr. Hoiker Thorgerson, Associate Research Professor here. And uh, what do we have here before us today, Hoiker? Now we are looking at the Codex Regius of Graugaus, so the laws of the Icelandic Republic. And the text of Graugaus derives from about what time? Well, this is a manuscript written uh, in the 13th century, in the second half of the uh, 13th century, actually as the uh, Republic was coming to an end, as uh, Iceland was becoming a part of Norway. and. This, uh, we have two uh, large uh, Graugaus manuscripts from this time. They may have been uh, written with the purpose of uh, making, uh, well, th there was some ongoing work to harmonize Icelandic law with Norwegian law. Mm -hmm. So this m might have been written around that time and for that uh, purpose, mm -hmm. but it reflects the laws in Iceland uh, before uh, the uh, Iceland came under the rule of the, the Norwegian kings. And these are the oldest Icelandic laws that we have in writing, is that correct? That is correct, yes. So and this, these manuscripts are the... Uh, we just have two complete copies of Krakos. We have some older fragments from the uh, 12th century and uh, the 13th century. Hmm. Well, this, in terms of dating, strikes me as uh, right about the same as uh, probably the most famous Icelandic manuscript, the Kongsbok Edukvaidi. Yes. Um, I see very, very similar orthography. However, this looks so much finer, right? Right, yes, it, it is. The orthography is, is quite similar to that of the uh, Codex Regius of the Attic Poems. And again, we have all these books called Codex Regius of this oh, right, or that. Right. It's, it's, uh, it's so confusing. Yeah, so they were in the uh, Royal Library in, in Copenhagen. That's what makes them uh, regal. Mm -hmm. Um, but also, this is quite a, a regal book. It is a very impressive manuscript, much more impressive than the uh, Epic Poems uh, manuscript. Did you say it's the largest in this collection? N no, not quite the largest. It is one of the largest. So the largest would be Flatair book, oh, okay. a 14th century manuscript. So the age of sort of uh, sumptuous manuscripts in, in Iceland, it, it, it stretches from uh, around this uh, time to uh, around the uh, beginning of the 15th century. So from the sort of the golden age in uh, Icelandic book production. Mm -hmm. And we have some very beautiful colored initials. That's true. It's a very easy manuscript to read. Mm -hmm. it's, it's still, it's, it, after all these years, it's uh, extremely legible. The uh, letters are, are large. Uh, everything is, is very clear. It's, uh, it's, it's just it's so nice. And you see that the margins are wide. Yep. You have this color. And we should turn the pages and... and Maybe uh, look at some more of these uh, beautiful pages. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here we have some. Oh, this is a color. This is actually a page I was trying to find earlier. Um, oh, here we are. This has a, it had a few things that I noticed. One is the finger in the margin, mm. uh, the, the pointing hand. I always loved these in medieval manuscripts because it shows you someone was using this mm -hmm. and said, "Pay attention to this part." Right. Yes. That's yes. So this probably isn't as old as the manuscript. It's mm -hmm. a bit too clumsy for this uh, Allingham scribe, but maybe some of our scholarly predecessors in the 17th or 18th century mm -hmm. made this. And this was a passage of uh, particular interest to someone. And we also see here, I remember I noticed on this page in the facsimile, we have some use of the mother rune to stand for the word mother. Yes, that's uh, also another sort of 13th century feature, mm -hmm. uh, a, a way to abbreviate uh, the word mother, man, or, or person, uh, is to write the and room itself. And I'm noticing too some, and, and this is it's, it's difficult to appreciate without looking at the physical manuscript, the way that larger letters are used to mark out sections, not, not too dissimilar perhaps from chapter markers for us. Yeah. And then some use of red, even where the letter isn't, a, isn't as big to, to mark out a section. Yeah. Here we have both green and red and mm -hmm. initials. This is, these are presumably the closest we're ever going to have to the laws that the Luke Sugamada was supposed to recite. Yes, very much. I mean, th that's, the, yeah, this is the very thing. This is the law of the uh, uh, Icelandic 
Commonwealth or Republic or, or what you want to call it. Are there particular laws that strike you as interesting to mention or? Well, one thing about this, you know, you can see this is, uh, it's not a simple thing, the law. No, it's, no, it's a hefty manuscript. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so it's not something easily, again, memorized or summarized even. And when you read it, you, you realize it's actually a lot of the, these laws uh, deal with sort of very particular cases. Uh, so, you know, you, you, you're expecting some general principles and then sometimes you, you just get a, 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 like a list of some very specific things that might happen and mm -hmm. what the uh, penalty should be. So we were discussing the hat yes. clauses earlier. So let us exemplify. If we're having a dispute, we're arguing very loudly mm -hmm. and you knock off my hat. A very rude thing to do. Yes. I feel bad about this, but but also illegal. Illegal, yes, and a m much worse penalty than mm -hmm. if you were to knock it off the other way. Right. right? Yeah. So this that's, is uh, less illegal. Yes, that's less illegal. Uh, I think the penalty for this may be lesser outlawry. Was that right? I would the, have to find know, that the section. penalty. Also, yeah. The, the, there's. You know, better be careful, because you you could get in trouble quite easily under under this law. And, yeah, uh, it really assumes a society where people will be quite willing to to kill you for all sorts of uh, things. Oh, we were noticing the part uh, that describes the women that it's legal for a man to kill for. Exactly. So so if someone rapes your sister or your mother, your wife, your daughter, you can kill them, mm. uh, and that's completely legal. But you have to get it done. Uh, in time, you have to get it done before the next assembly, I believe. The statute of limitations. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Also, and there are these famous uh, bad words. That oh, you that's can right. That's right. That's right. So, if someone calls you, there are three words that you uh, that give you every right to kill the person that says them to you. Uh, that's we'll, we'll have to bleep them out if you say them because yeah, I, I'd have to kill them. you. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, they they all mean the same thing. Right. Yeah, we, 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 we get the picture regardless. Um, now, one thing that was actually, I thought, a pretty fascinating part of studying these texts mm -hmm. is Quick and I were talking about this manuscript, about how we'd like to, to point out a few particular parts, and there are two principal medieval manuscripts of it, yes, right? that's right. This is uh, uh, Konungsbok, yeah. and there's also... I uh, sort of thought of spoke, is it? Uh, I think that <laughs> we better make sure. Yeah, I keep forgetting what the the S one is. Yeah. I just think of them as K and S. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and S itself is an interesting manuscript, isn't it? With Geesley said it has a really cool index. Oh right, yeah. Now this is really revealing here in that uh, I'm much more of an expert on the uh, Atas, which we were talking about earlier. Sure, but so you know. I, but yeah, that's Starr's book. That's true. But but this is this is on, on a meta level interesting to me because this is exactly what we wind up doing. His editions are going to make different decisions about mm. what they include, or translations are going to make different decisions about what they include, and we were having a very hard time going from the edition back to finding something in the manuscript. Exactly. I think that's really telling, mm. right, about just how much editorial decision making has gone on in that editorial process. Yeah, exactly. So you have uh, two manuscripts that, that have the material in a somewhat different order, have somewhat different material, and you want to edit them together. And there are also the different ways you might do that. Mm -hmm. So uh, different ways for us to get confused. Yep. Yep. So we have not always successfully found the particular passage that we're looking for. Regardless, it is cool at every page. And, you know, I'm noticing Again, compared to the well, the Konings book of Snorra Edu mm -hmm. that we that we read, that was a weird hybrid of English and I was like there. Um, it, it's clearly earlier. Yeah. Uh, the orthography definitely looks looks more uh, Carolingian insular. We see, for example, the use of when for v. We see vegandi mm -hmm. up there. Yeah. Um, vet vangi. Yeah. The, the oh old, yeah, yeah, the old yeah, when letter. That, yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. And now the Lugsuga mother, who is, according to this very book, supposed to learn the laws reflected in this very book, 
Yeah. What was his position in the old republic? Right. Well, it was an elected position. So and he was. Uh, so probably it was the highest position in in Republican Iceland. Uh, and, th and there's an elaborate uh, procedure for electing the, the law speaker in case not everyone agrees who's supposed to be the law speaker. And, mm. and again, we, we have this uh, we, we have this law that describes how to do this, but we don't really know in practice how did it work. Mm. Uh, so did the uh, you know chief magnates sort of get together and sort of informally decide? Well, it's really Sturla's turn now. Mm -hmm. uh, or did they sometimes have like uh, elections that uh, you, you know? Uh, so, so that someone would be uh, that more than one person would be actively campaigning for being lost in that. We have a, uh, we have no record of that. But it, the law has this clause that if, if it comes down to it, the, you can have uh, uh, this procedure for for electing a lost in that by majority vote. So first, you're supposed to decide uh, by lot or something which uh, part of the country should elect the uh, huh. law speaker, and then. The, the majority vote for for the representatives, if you, if you can call, and call them that, for the people from that quarter who attend the uh, all thing. It's a it, it is a sort of uh, democracy or mm -hmm. republic, but it, it's uh, qu quite different from from what we uh, know. And we also notice that there is a fairly large section devoted to uh, weir guilds, or yeah. how much is paid in restitution for killing people of different social statuses mm -hmm. right yeah and, and you have also you know you have so much uh, about slavery here mm. which is another thing we, we don't really know we have the law but we don't know so much about the re reality so slavery is uh, not no doubt so during the viking age uh, a very uh, important let's say a thing so uh, you were uh, d doing all these raids and uh, enslaving all these people and uh, putting them to work but then uh, once that ended, once you once you're not raiding and uh, getting slaves that way, you uh, the, the the economic incentives for slavery are not really present anymore. So uh, that's one re one thing that may have contributed to uh, slavery sort of declining. Another thing is uh, the, the church uh, was not too happy about uh, Christians enslaving other Christians. Mm. Uh, so by the time this book was written, even though uh, it has all these clauses on slavery, it is uh, unlikely that there was... Uh, well, the, the accounts we have from 13th century Iceland don't suggest that slavery was an important social institution at that time. Interesting. So it's being handed down, the, the laws are being handed down that are no longer perhaps applicable to an institution that... Right. This is dying out anyway. Yeah. Um, huh. Are there mentions, speaking of dying out institutions, are there mentions of dueling in Karagas that you can recall? Because that was supposed to be outlawed in Iceland early on, right? I don't remember, I'm sorry. Uh, I couldn't say. I was just thinking about something like Gunnlaug Saga where they uh, they go to Norway to have their duel because mm, it's been outlawed at, at the all thing. Oh, right. Yeah. Isn't that a plot point? I guess, yes. I guess what I'm thinking is, it, is it how much is that reflecting actual law decisions, right? Right, yes. And we don't know, again, so even for 13th century Iceland, we're not so sure uh, how the uh, text and the rea not just the reality, but even yeah. less so for the saga age. Uh, right. So what, what, is it, what is, how did this work in the 10th century or the early 11th century? It's, uh, sure. Well, and, and, and William Ian Miller points out in, in some of his books, notably about Njalsaga and Hrafnkel's saga, that the way the law works in the sagas is not always the same as what we see in the actual law codes. That there's yeah. more dramatic turns than you would actually see in the real procedures. Right, but also uh, one thing that sometimes surprises people is how elaborate the law is. And also in Brennan Yosa, for example, you have this, uh, you have so much formalism about the mm -hmm. law. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to recite uh, this and that, and you're supposed to do it all correctly. And it's easy to uh, make mistakes. Sure. So, uh, you know, you could get, get off on a technicality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, Njalsak is full of that and full of just uh, law and order scenes, yeah, like yeah. a courtroom drama. It is a courtroom novel in a way. Right, you're investigating, you know, the cheese disappearance and so on. Yeah, so. right, right, oh my God. <laughs> CSI, Lee Barendi. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but 
you know, looking at this manuscript again, I, I, I see something that took so much logistical planning, mm -hmm. right? Someone had to earmark, probably literally earmark, yeah. the animals whose skin would make this. Had to plan it maybe years in advance. I'm going to have a law book made. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I just think to myself, such a beautiful product, noticeably more grandiose than any other manuscript that I've seen here. Right. Well, I know the Flotator book is pretty grandiose too, but, but of its time, certainly. Mm -hmm. Who's this for? Who's this made for? Is it? Is it? It must be made for someone important. Yeah, this is. This seems obvious, but the, again, it it seems pr probably the uh, leading man of the country were thinking about the law at this time. They were thinking about Norwegian law, Icelandic law. We have all this traditional law. How are we? What are we going to do going forward? Because we had uh, so shortly after, around the time this uh, is being written. Uh, Iceland gets a new law book from mm. Norway, so Jartsida, and that one isn't received so well. It, so ten years later, uh, there's another new law book, Jonsbok, and there they've actually come back and uh, studied Graukaus a bit more, and you know made some compromises with uh, traditional Icelandic law, and so Jonsbok was a success. So most of the uh, legal manuscripts we have, and we have um, very many, are, are of Jonsbok. So that was valid for centuries, and can it retains. Uh, a lot of stuff from uh, Graugaus. And speaking of retentions from Graugaus, uh, just yesterday I was getting thrown around like a rag doll on the Glima floor mm -hmm. at the, the Outermont Sports Center. And I understand that some of the rules for what counts as a fall in Glima that are described in Graugaus are still valid mm -hmm. today. Right, Glima is a lot of fun, huh? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, uh, it's obviously not the constitution of present day Iceland. No, no, it's not. Uh, but, but there are definitely echoes of it. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. I'm not trying to, 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 I don't know, over, over modernize its applicability, maybe, but there's continuity, even yeah. in, even if it's just in some small corners like that, like Lima. Right. Although I'm not going to kill you for knocking my head off this way. Though I think I could, right? Yeah. I think that I think there's a procedure we could follow in this book that would explain mm -hmm. how much I would pay to your family for killing you for knocking my head off, and it wouldn't be as much as if I killed you for no reason. Yeah, better work out the uh, <laughs> logistics before we. Uh, yeah, I better read that. the entire mm -hmm. thing before mm -hmm. I decide about that. And there's probably some formula you can recite that would help you. I think that that's the next thing we should do, read the entire thing. Yes, okay. Well, Hooker, thank you so much for pulling out these manuscripts for me. This has been uh, an incredible experience to flip through Gragos with you. And uh, from beautiful Iceland, we're wishing you all the best.